guys. Hey. Where are you at? We're at the beach. In Hawaii. Go. It is now Tuesday, April 4th, as I filmed this, and it is another ridiculous day in court, listening to all the ridiculous lies of Letitia Stauk. Today, her husband, her ex-husband, Albert Stauk, took the stand. Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. He spoke of his horrible marriage to Letitia Stauk. It was good in the beginning, Al said. We know Letitia's on trial for the sad demise of her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon Stauk. So some of these things we heard about, rumors, everything, we can confirm them now. Al, or Albert Stauk, did admit that he met Letitia on a softball team. Apparently, according to the rumors, his wife, ex-wife Landon, wife at the time, Landon was on the same softball team. Al admitted his marriage to Landon was going by the wayside, almost 10 years married. He met Letitia, her daughter Harley, and he started seeing Letitia. I'm sure the defense is going to kind of tear him up on that point, but he said it was good in the beginning because his ex-wife Landon had custody of Gannon and Lena, their two children, so Letitia and Al got to experience a lot of travel time, fun together, just alone, the two of them in the beginning. Isn't it always so great in the beginning? But that marriage turned rocky. Letitia liked to travel. She obviously likes to lie. She likes to live above her means. And Al admitted that Kim Kardashian is one of Letitia's heroes, basically. She wanted to be like her. So no wonder I did see that video from Letitia's daughter, Harley, that said on the label, she said these are her Kim Kardashian shades. Obviously, Letitia had this mindset of being like Kim K. And you know, Harley was 17 and almost out of the house and her and Al were together. But when Al received more custody or more share of time with his kids and Letitia fell into this role of stepmom, obviously the role didn't suit her. Letitia really got angry when Al wanted to switch his position up to Alaska. Letitia manipulated things so much that she created this big Alaska criminal investigation. If you want to find the details of that, I put the link to the video below. You should be able to hopefully listen to it on Spotify and even watch it if Spotify video is working correctly. Letitia manipulates and does everything she can to try and put things in her favor. Lies upon lies upon lies. So Al met Tisha at that softball game. And from that point, Al was asked all sorts of questions like from the cartel to Colombia to their Hawaiian trip to Tisha's love of travel and living beyond her means. She did have dreams to be a flight attendant. So Al talked about that, as you'll hear coming up. I'm currently listening to right now the very first long phone call when Al became part of the investigation. He knew his wife at the time, Letitia, was lying about the whereabouts of Gannon. She came to pick Al up in a rental car. She parked her Volkswagen Tiguan. Actually, I believe she parked it at the airport in Denver at DIA. But she lied to Al and told him she parked it somewhere at an elementary school. Al went to that elementary school and drove around three times and couldn't find her Volkswagen black Tiguan all blacked out. He knew something was wrong. He was freaking out. He went back to the police station and started working with cops. I think I'll end up putting phone calls in a separate video. They're going to be so long. Al gets on the phone. He's so patient with Letitia as she just spins this yarn of all this horrible lies. So for now, just listen to everything he says about their horrible marriage. And we'll look forward to the phone calls later because this is a lot of testimony. Some of it's so heartbreaking. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. The most praiseworthy thing I could think of is Gannon getting his justice. I don't know how Al stayed so calm on that phone as he listened to Letitia spin all these lies. So we'll see what happens with those phone calls, there's plenty of them. For now, take a look at the testimony. Al is still just being questioned by the prosecution, DA Michael Allen. They have to stop themselves from calling each other Mike and Al. Obviously, they know each other really well. DA Allen almost cries at some points. And Letitia looks down a lot 
it's like she doesn't want to hear or see the video being played where she's gaslighting Gannon. She doesn't want to hear the phone calls where she's rambling on and on about all these lies. Take a listen to what Al has to say and watch here what he has to say about meeting Letitia, things being great at first, and then how much they devolved, and all the games and trickery that Letitia enacted, especially how angry she got when Al wanted to be stationed in Alaska for two years, but all of a sudden she starts accusing these two guys of impropriety and making it so uncomfortable that Al ended up leaving Alaska. So again, I have that video linked to below where they talk about Fort Greeley, where he was stationed in Alaska from March 2017 to February 2019, and the phone interview with Letitia Stauk and Lieutenant Colonel, a woman who's in Alaska Army National Guard assistance, and all of the stuff, all the machinations she went through just to get her way. And even accusing Gannon of coming after her with a knife and all these things that are coming back to my memory now. And they even played that Hawaii video of Gannon. I hope I can find it so I can include it in here because some things we can't see on the screen. We can only hear the way things are set up in WebEx. I know some people want to see it. They wish it was more like the court's back in session. I better go listen. Thanks for watching. The jury's not present in the courtroom. Oh, thank you. Um, is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? Prosecution? Defense? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. <coughs> Just I am Todd. Is that what you did? And I can hear him back there, so. <clears throat> All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. you. may all be seated. Court will recall uh, 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Um, we're going to start the day, uh, as we will every day from here on out, uh, with a question. Has anything occurred since we were last together that causes any of you to believe that you could not continue to serve as a fair and impartial juror in this case? If so, please raise your hand. No response. All right, yesterday uh, we finished the day with the opening statements of both the prosecution and the defense. At this point in time, the prosecution uh, will be calling their witnesses. Mr. Allen, call your first witness, please. <coughs> Mr. Stauk, if you would step forward and raise your right hand, please, sir. <coughs> Mr. 
Mr. Stauk, if you'd raise your right hand, please, sir. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give this medal be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Go ahead and have a seat in the witness stand. Please watch your step as you step into the stand. Mr. Allen? Thank you, Your Honor. How will you please introduce yourself to this jury and spell your name for the record? Um, Al Stauk, and that's S-T-A-U-C-H, and Gannon's father. <laughs> Al, I want to um, start by talking a little bit about you. You may. People's exhibit number. What is people's exhibit number one? That's my boy. In. Yes. Say yes or no. Yes. I move for admission of people's exhibit one. Defense. Exhibit number one will be admitted. Go ahead. I would object to it. I can't see it. Okay. We need to take it down though if it's all right. I want to have you tell the jury a little bit about your son. How old was he when you lost him? He's 11. <clears throat> How was he born? September 29th, 2008. No, he was uh, four months early. One pound and six ounces. Who is Dana's mother? Landon uh, Hyatt, oh, I, I think her name's Bullard now. Landon Bullard. Were you married with Landon when Gannon was born? I was, yes. Gannon have a little sister? Yes. Lena. Straight for the jury, how big Gannon was? Or Scott the whole? Yeah, so as I said, he was born on September 29th, and it was about a month after that. I think it was October 20th. I got to hold him for the first time, and that's how big he was right there. And with the last time I ever got to hold him, he was in a box about that big as well. Six months after he died. Was he in the hospital for a short amount of time after him? Yeah, I believe we brought him home in January. If I remember correctly, the, towards the end of January or sometime in January of um, 2009. So about three, three and a half months in the hospital. Did he have any uh, issues that you guys overcome? Do you have premature? Uh, yeah, early on he had um, a lot of lung issues. Actually, while he was in the hospital, he had quite a number of surgeries, um, hernia, he had some, like I said, I think he was lung collapse one time. So he had a chest tube, also was on a feeding tube and a lot of things that go along with being a preemie. Um, after that, he, he did take a while to overcome his lung issues. He had pneumonia and RSV, I think at the same time, at one point, a um, couple, I mean, the, the only long lasting, well, two long lasting things he had from it, he just had some stomach issues where he had trouble going to the bathroom and then um, he did have ADHD. Was he, uh, did he sort of lag in size to kids similarly aged? Uh, not really. I mean, other than at his birth, obviously he was very, very small, one pound, six ounces. Um, but once he caught up, I think we held him back a grade or a, a year just to allow that and him to catch up a little bit in size. But no, you couldn't tell any difference with his, the fifth graders the, the year he died. So where was he born? Was he? Uh, South Carolina, Florence, South Carolina. When did you all move to? Uh, I moved. I moved to Colorado in uh, February of 2019. Um, my Tisha and the kids had come a month earlier. I, I was stationed in Alaska prior to that. So, what did Gannon like to do for fun? Oh, some of his favorite times, and all of his friends can attest to this, is just playing video games. Um, I think he, he wanted to be a YouTube uh, gamer. I think he actually was able to make one video and put it on YouTube, so it's out there, but 
playing Sonic and uh, actually Mario was his favorite. So um, that was some of the favorite things I ever got to do with him. So. Up on your witness stand, mm -hmm. um, you should also have a binder there. See yes, sir. It's going to get a little crowded up there. Small camera there. Stand in front of me. It's going to be there too. Look like that. It's should be the first exhibit now. Yes. What is people's exhibit? Excuse me. That's a picture of Lena. Uh, yes, sir. That would have been probably 2018 at our house in Myrtle Beach. Defense. Uh, exhibit number two will be admitted. Uh, all right. Oops. There you go. Where was that photo taken? Uh, like I said, we owned a house in Myrtle Beach at that time, and I believe that would have been the fall of 2018. So how old was Lena? Um, 2012, so six and a half. Yeah. Right, thanks. Yeah, about six and a half years old. Was, was she also born early? She was. Uh, she actually tried to come out a little earlier than Gannon. They were you know, always competitive with one another, but... Uh, Gannon was born at 24 weeks. She tried to come out at 22. Um, but I think it was actually 34 weeks of, you know, being with her mom and her tummy there before she came out. So she was about two months early. What was the relationship like between you? Oh, I obviously as much love as a sister or brother could have. I, I think one of the, <coughs> I think a famous quote Lena said after Gannon died was, I'm just going to miss getting on his nerves. So if that sums it up for you right there, but yeah, he loved his sister. And uh, well, one thing I always urged him to do, and I know his mama did too, was to look after his little sister and even getting off the bus and walking home. I used to fuss at him if he uh, let her walk home alone and it was three houses away. So that was kind of the theme for us. Just be with your sister and be together, you know? For you and you can... How long were you uh, um, just shy of 10 years, um, but dating and all, I think we were together 11, 11 or so, 12 years. You know the defendant in this case? Yes, sir. Uh, I was married to her for four or five years, whatever it was. When did you meet her? I met her, uh, I think somewhere along the way playing softball on the one of the various teams we uh, played on, uh, but I didn't really get to know her until, um, beginning of 2014 so january time frame january, you said? january of 2014 is when i started to when i like met her and went out there and started to get to know her this is um not intended to embarrass me but were you still married to landon yes sir we were separated and uh you know with the intent of getting divorced going our separate ways and, and that's when i met and started dating tisha did the defendant have her own she did. Harley. You move in that binder to people's exhibit number three. Is that a picture of Harley? Sure is. Picture of her. Yes, sir. Who was that photo taken? Um, looks like at, I mean I think that would have been 2019. It looks like her high school graduation picture, if I'm not mistaken. This time move for admission of people's. Okay. Exhibit three will be admitted. Yes, sir. Where was that from? It, I believe it was in Columbia, South Carolina, where uh, the graduation was. Somewhere in South Carolina. Because she would... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say she was. She finished her high school at an online school that was based in South Carolina. So she went back for the graduation. When you began your relationship with the South Carolina? It was, yes, sir. Myrtle Beach. When did you and the defendant get? Uh, January 2015. Yes, sir. Did you identify her and point to where she's sitting and describe what she's wearing? 
t-shirt right there with the kind of green jacket on, bluish green jacket, black. The record will so reflect, go ahead. You do for, for uh, I'm an officer in the Colorado National Guard in a full-time status. <laughs> so let's talk about the guard is typically... Typically, yeah, uh, one week in a month and then a summer duty. You said that you're full. I am. Uh, so I am in a, it's called AGR, and that's what I've been my whole career. Uh, even in starting in South Carolina, I was... Uh, it's active guard is what it is. Um, was there for a uh, rough 12 years or so um, as a recruiter and in, in, in other capacities. And then I took my commission as an officer and moved states. Um, I didn't necessarily get transferred, but I moved states to Alaska uh, as an officer and then spent two about two years there and then been in Colorado since 2019 as an officer in the Colorado Guard. So uh, my, my main duties are as, right now as a missile defense officer. So let's talk a little bit about the family history. You said you got married in January 2015. Sir. Was that in South Carolina? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I went to, I got hired and went there. I reported in June. Um, I had to come through here for some schooling. We call it TDY and route, but uh, I got hired, went to school here, and then drove up to Alaska to be permanently stationed. June. Uh, 2017. Uh, somewhat. It was when I when I initially drove there. I had my two children with me, um, Lane, Lane and Gannon, and we made that trip and uh, one of the most memorable trips of my life. Um, and then Tisha and Harley came along the way a little bit later, but they they never really permanently moved there. They came for a couple weeks at a time and. And, and then came and left and did whatever else. Just a little bit. When, what was the uh, initially, well, I'll, I'll talk about during our separation, they they both stayed, the kids stayed in the house and me and Landon alternated time in the house so the kids could be as stable as possible during that um, tough time. Initially, the custody status, Landon had the majority time, um, but we were both in the same local area. So, you know, we did the best we could at um, sharing that time. But I think she moved in initially with her mom and the kids stayed there with her. And that was the initial agreement. And when you said she, just so the director is clear, you're talking about Landon. Landon, I'm sorry. Yes, Landon specifically had the custody arrangement. At some point, uh, custody uh, yes, that would have been in March of 2018 while I was in Alaska. You mentioned just a moment ago, oh, I mean, too. So I think you can. Yes, sir. So did you have custody of them before you actually got transferred to Alaska? No, because that was 2017 when I took that trip initially. Um, and then they were still with their mom, um, Landon, with the majority time, uh, custody time. They What they did was they spent the summer with me in Alaska, and then I flew them back home or back to their mother for the start of the next school year. What did you do to Colorado? Uh, I moved to me individually, I can't, I think I got boots on ground February 15th of 2019, I believe is the date I got here. And like I said, Tisha and the kids were here beginning of January, getting a house set and everything. The defendant, yeah. You may. Show you what's been marked as People's Exhibit Number Four. Do you recognize this? Yes, that looks like a map of uh, Lorison Ranch neighborhood. Does it have a uh, specific address notated on that map? It does. What's that address? Uh, that would have been our house at six six two seven Mandan Drive. Is that a Colorado Springs address? It is. Is that in El Paso County, Colorado? It is. 
Your Honor, move for admission of Pupils Exhibit Number Four. Mr. Tallini, number Exhibit Number Four will be admitted. Go ahead. For a moment. Can you point out the label where the six six two seven Mandan Drive address is? Right here. Is that where you lived when you moved to Colorado from Alaska? Yeah, I um, I think it, just to be clear, initially I think they had a, a little temporary housing on base, as you do when you PCS. Um, and then Tisha, or the defendant, found um, that house for rent, and we moved in. Um, and I think they were already in the house when I got here. When did when did you all move into that house? I don't remember the sp specific date. I know they were already in the house by the time I got here in the middle of February. Okay. So February 2019, when you came from Alaska to here, you went to that. House. I went directly to the house from the airport. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. This already, but is that address in El Paso County, Colorado? Yes, sir. How long did you all live in that house? Um, I lived there, I guess, right at a year because when everything happened with Gannon in January of 2020, uh, you know, the investigation started taking place and we pretty much decided just to move out. And the landlord allowed us to break the lease at that point. And then, uh, so it would have been early February of 2020 when we moved out officially. So let's just go through just a general description of that house. Was it a two story, a rancher, a rancher with a basement? I, I'm not too savvy on specific style of houses, but it had a main floor to basement. Was the basement finished? It was. Was there also an unfinished area? Um, I mean, in the closet what was unfinished, but all the areas we frequented in the house were finished. What about where the furniture room was? Yeah, when I said closet, that's uh, that's what I was referring to, the furnace room, yes. <laughs> I call it, yeah, because we kept the luggage and boxes and stuff in there. And there was another unfinished closet under the stairs as well. I'm sure we'll see that as well. Where was the bedroom that you ended up? Uh, in, on, the fir on the main floor. And then was there a, a level above that? Negative. Okay, so it's just the main floor and then a basement? Then the basement, yes, sir. Who else had a bedroom? Uh, initially, it was Gannon. Um, when we first moved in, but at one point we switched Lena and Gannon to what we'll see as Gannon's bedroom and Lena moved upstairs. And how many bedrooms, other bedrooms were upstairs? Uh, just that one bedroom when you walk in the front door. So two bedrooms? Two bedrooms total, yep. And then two bedrooms? Yes, sir. Is there a living room on that main level? Yes, sir. Kitchen? Kitchen, yes, sir. Access to the garage on that main level? Yeah, and the access included the laundry stuff, the laundry room. Okay. So, And then what about downstairs? Uh, downstairs was, as soon as you come down the stairs to the left was the, uh, I call it the closet, but the um, the boiler room or whatever. And then Gannon's room right next to that. To the right was the, the uh, I don't know, living room area in the basement. And then behind that was a bathroom and what was Harley's room, Harley's bedroom. Have you... Look at the exhibit book. Can you look at it? He has five through 12. And just give me a heads up when. <laughs> okay. What are those photos I've keeping? Just different uh, viewpoints of the house. You want me to go through specifically? Yes, so are the okay. pictures of the 6627 Mandan Drive residence? Yes, starting with the outside and working through the house. So People's Exhibit 5, is that the front of the house? Yeah, that would be a front view where you can see the garage and the front door, yes. People's Exhibit 6, what is that? That's as soon as you come in the front door, uh, there's a the coat closet to the left and then a view of the living room. So. Uh, that's a, walking into the house further, you can see the couch in the living room and the kitchen to the right as well as the back sliding patio door. You can see what's well, behind the curtains, but that's what that is. Okay. Same thing, it's a closer up view of the kitchen. Um, you can kind of see the dishwasher and everything, but yeah, that's the kitchen area. Nine is basically looks like it's standing at the back sliding glass door where you can see the living room, the stairs down, and then the, the garage entryway there. The upstairs, living upstairs living room. 
That is a view of the master bedroom. As soon as you walk in. That is a view of the laundry area. Um, and then the next door would be access to the garage. 12 is the garage. Are those all fair and accurate representations of those areas of the front that you just described? Yes, sir. Okay. Exhibits five through twelve will be admitted. Go ahead. Uh, you may give me just a second, though. All right. Go ahead. So, it's the front. Here's the garage door. It is. Moving on to people's sets. So point out, and there's actually an extended bunter on behind there. No. Other side. Yeah, it's right here. Other side. Other side? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. If you don't want to, you can just turn around and nothing is. Just make sure when you're pointing away from us that the furthest you're from, you can hear you look at. Okay. So what are we looking at here? So, um, like I said, this is uh, walking into the front door. This is uh, what I used as my closet, actually, but the front, what would be a coat closet. Um, you can see the couch in the living room right there. Um, as we walk forward, we'll see to the right is the kitchen. And this is a, a wall that um, covers the stairwell going down. But that's the living room area right in here on the main floor. So the front door, would that be basically to our back in this photo? Yes. As you walk in the front door, front door is right behind us. Yes, sir. Okay. You will exhibit number seven. Tell the jury what they're looking at there. Uh, this is where I referenced the couch in the living room kitchen area and the back sliding patio doors uh, behind the curtains there. There's a dog in the photo there as well. Yeah, that's Chance. And then it looks like there might be a person on the couch. Yep, and that would be Harley right there. Okay, people's exhibit number eight. <coughs> uh, same thing, here's the kitchen. Uh, I said just a second ago, dishwasher and the back sliding doors once again. People's exhibit number nine. Uh, yeah, so right behind us right now would be the those back patio sliding doors. And here's the stairwell going down. This is the wall I referenced in the first picture. Uh, you know, TV living room area. And this is the entryway into the laundry room. And this would be the master bedroom behind this wall. So sort of around the corner there? Yeah, you have to go around the corner and into the master bedroom. Okay. And people's exhibit number 10. What are we looking at there? Uh, so, yeah, going around that corner, we've come into the master bedroom now. Master bedroom doors behind us. And this would have been a window into the backyard and um, master bed right here. And then sort of over to the left, what's to the left in that photo? So if you go sort of if we don't have a picture of it yet, right. but where okay. would that go? So I'm look if I'm standing looking at this back door and I turn my body to the left, there'll be the bathroom, the master bathroom. And then through that master bathroom would have been Tisha's, or excuse me, the defendant's closet. Okay. And then people's exhibit number 11. Uh, once again, looking from that living room view, this is the garage entryway we discussed and uh, the laundry facilities right here. And then into that, uh, through that door would be into the garage. Okay. People's 12. And that is the garage. Whose car is parked there in that garage? That was the car that belonged to Harley. What kind of car is that? It's a Volkswagen Jetta. I think it was a 2018 Volkswagen Jetta. Looks like maybe somebody is a woodworker. Somebody. Who's that? Uh, I try. I don't know if I can claim to be an actual woodworker, but I give it a, my best shot. So so that woodworking material there, uh, various pieces of wood and table and all that kind of thing, that's your stuff. Yeah, pretty much this whole side of the garage was dedicated with parking bikes. But other than that, it was, uh, you know, just to my supplies and my woodworking stuff. What kind of stuff would you build with wood? Well, this you see right here, I actually just, well, I'm about 90% done as a table for mom. And I surprised her with it the other day. Um, one of my favorite things to make is like cutting boards and uh, like epoxy boards and stuff like that. But that's kind of what I do. So you <coughs> mentioned making a table for, I think you said mom. Do you mean your mom? Yeah, my mom sitting right over there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you would make some furniture? Yeah, some furniture. And then also cutting boards? Cutting boards and stuff like that, yeah. I want to take, have you take a look in that binder again. Okay. Should be the next exhibit, number 34. Do you see it there? Uh, I have 13 is next. So flip all the way to Flip 34. to 34, okay. Yeah.
Yes, sir. Is that a photo of a table that you built? Yes, sir. Could you build that table for? I built that for Gannon, so he'd have a place to put his, uh, you know, Legos and his, you know, his little toys and stuff in his room. Is it a fair and accurate representation of uh, that table that you built? Yes, sir. You know, I move for admission and permission to publish People's 34. Mr. Tolini. No objection. Exhibit 34 will be admitted. Go ahead. So People's 34 is now displayed on the two screens here. Uh, it, it's fairly obvious, but just point out the table that we're talking about that you built for Gannon. Right here is red and blue one, and the colors were specifically for Mario. Like I said, it's one of his favorite things, so I wanted him to enjoy that based on his Mario little thing. Um, and then there's a some scrap wood uh, in that photo just to the left there. Can you point that out? Yeah, so uh, a little piece of like OSB board and then my uh, circular saw here. There's more of that same OSB up there. I use that to build those... Uh, in the laundry room, you saw that little shoe container is gray, built it out of that wood. So, so you you used a term that I'm not familiar with. I'm not a woodworker. OSB, what does that mean? OSB, it's, it's like plywood, different types of plywood. It's, okay. it's a generic term. Okay. Plywood, so. <clears throat> Article board is another word that's used. Commonly. Okay. And if you could pull that down the picture. And then I want to have you now flip back to people's um, 13 through 31. And then just flip through all of those and tell me when you're done. 13 through? 31. Thank you. <clears throat> Stop at 31, you said? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, are those basically just uh, more photos of the 6627 Mandan Drive address? Majority of them, yes, sir. Um, are they all fair and accurate representations of uh, that house? Yes, sir. I move for admission of 13 through 31 and permission to publish. Mr. Tolini. Couple, and I'm referring to. At a 1920. I'm sorry. And yeah. 21. I, I think there's going to be, there needs to be more foundation laid for those photos. But for the rest of them, I don't have them. Good catch. So those are coming later. So okay. it's 13 through 18 and then 21 through 31. My apologies. Okay. okay. Let's go there. 13 through 18 and 21 through 31. Do you have an objection? I do not. All right. Those photos will be admitted. Go ahead. And permission to publish those photos, Your Honor. You may. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right, so we've got 13 displayed on the screen there. Describe what we're looking at there. So if you can see over here, this carpet, this is where we came in the front door and I said there was the wall leading down the stairs and this is the stairway to the basement. People's number 14. So, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention the stairs kind of do a wraparound. So we came down the stairs and now we're looking down into the basement. We had a little computer area here. Um, but yeah, that's the basement entryway. And 15? So coming down the stairs to the right, this is what you would have seen the little, uh, I call it the downstairs living room. So TV, sofa, mm -hmm. that kind of My thing. bike and then the dog's kennel was over here. And then, you know, mementos, you can see college degrees and pictures of the family and stuff. Was it typical that you all would spend time as a family in this room? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched a lot of movies with the kids down there, but um, we did upstairs as well. So would the kids spend time on their own down there? Oh, yeah, a lot. Because again, uh, the, you can see his uh, Nintendo Switch right here as that was his pride and joy. And uh, we also had a PlayStation and they would watch movies and saw so the gaming and stuff typically took place downstairs. Just to the right of that photo, uh, was there a hallway that went back to that back bedroom? Yeah, it's hard can, to see. You can kind of see a little uh, crease right here. That's the corner and it goes into uh, Harley's room and then her bathroom area. And there's another closet right there. Okay. And then People's Exhibit 16. 
Yeah, so this would have been the couch we just saw um, in the other picture. And then this is just the back corner. Um, I guess it would have been what the northwest corner of the basement. I don't know, but um, but yeah. And then you sort of uh, started to point at it there, but there's a blackish square there in the center of that carpet. Yes, sir. Uh, just backing up a little bit. Uh, in January of 2020, um, specifically January 25th and 26th, uh, which would have been a Saturday and Sunday, were you at home on the on that weekend? No, I actually, uh, it's kind of hard to explain my duty schedule, but every other week I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that week I actually have the work day shift on a Friday and Saturday, and then I left town on Sunday. So I was at work all day Saturday, came home, uh, the defendant and my mom was in town and the defendant and the I and my mom and the kids ate dinner. And then uh, my mom was leaving that night. So I took her to the airport in Denver um, for her flight. And then I stayed in the airport. I slept across from the ticket counter on the floor there. And then uh, I, cause I had an early morning flight to go to Oklahoma for training for two weeks. So, so when did you actually um, drive up to Denver? And I'm assuming you mean uh, DIA Denver airport. Yeah. DIA. Uh, so, I mean, I get off, I don't think I got off early that evening. I, I usually get off at 1800 or at 6 p.m. And uh, it was 15 minute drive home or so. Um, we ate dinner and then I, no later than eight o'clock, I would assume. I, I don't remember exactly what time mom's flight left DIA, but. So you drive mom up to the airport and then you just stayed at the airport because you had a flight the next day? I had an early morning flight to uh, uh, through Dallas, I think to Lawton, Oklahoma. Uh, but yeah, I did. I just slept on my uh, duffel bag or whatever right there. There's a little seating area right across from the American Airlines ticket counter at DIA. And I just laid down on the floor right there. So when you left on Saturday evening, whatever time it was, who was left at the Mandan Drive residence? Uh, the defendant and then uh, Harley and Lena and Gannon. Any other adults there? Not that I know of. No, how, old was, how old was Harley at that time? She would have been, let's see, 5102. That was, so she was uh, 17. Go how, old was 18. Uh, how old was Gannon? 11. And Lena? Uh, Lena was, uh, what, her birthday's in January. So, sorry, I'm doing math here. So, eight, she had just turned eight. Okay. You're doing math better than I could if right. I was sitting on the stand. So, thank you. So, um, when you left the house on that Saturday evening to drive mom and yourself up to the DIA, was that carpet like that when you left? It was not, no, sir. Um, did you talk to the defendant about that? I th I believe she... I, I, well, first, did, did you talk to her about it? I did talk to her. She said there was a, an accident and a candle spill. Okay. I, I don't know if it was... Uh, let me clarify. I don't remember if it was over a text or over a phone call, but there was a conversation about it at some okay. point. Do you remember when you learned about a uh, candle spill and a burn or whatever? I confident that it was that Sunday night, which would have been the 26th. Okay. Either that or the next morning in okay. the text messages. And is that what we're looking at there is sort of uh, a cutout area of that carpet as a result of whatever burn happened? Yeah, what what I was told was, yeah, there was a spill here, but you can also see that she claimed there was, a, the defendant claimed there's supposedly some candles spilled on the couch as well. You can see those little spots there. That's what she claimed that was. <laughs> Did she ever say who cut that square out like that? I, when I got home, I think there was something over it. So I don't, I don't know if she ever, the defendant ever told me that she had cut anything out. I, I cannot remember specifically on that. Okay. Let's move on to People's Exhibit 17. What are we looking at here? So basically you're kind of standing by the TV almost now. And then you're looking back to where we came down the stairs. And this would have been that entryway into Harley's area. Once again, the dog kennel, we referenced that in the computer area. And this is what I call it a closet. I, I forget how you referenced it, but the boiler room or whatever. I call it a storage room. But storage room, okay. Uh, unfinished area where furnace and that kind of thing? Yes, sir. Okay. And then where's Gannon's room in relation to that? So you'd have this behind this wall. You just, there's a little small little uh, hallway. As soon as you get here, you take a right and it leads into his bedroom. Okay. People's Exhibit 18. Is that just a, sh a closer up view of into that storage room? Yeah, now we're walking towards the storage room here and then you can see this little, you know, gap here. That's how you get into Gannon's room. People's 21. 
So, Judge, we'll have to turn the screen off for just a moment. Okay, we're ready. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so 21 is on the screen behind you now. Okay. What are we looking at there? So we've ta we've taken probably two or three steps into Gannon's room now because we're kind of in the center. This was his bed. <coughs> and um, as I mentioned before, you can see the remnants of when Layton lived here. Those are definitely not Gannon's stickers, but um, his bed here, um, there's that table that I built for him for his toys. And then there would also be another bed over on this side of the room um, as we're looking at it to the right. Um, this was a, a storm well or whatever. I remember we're in the basement and I believe there was a ladder in this one going up to the backyard. His closet would have been over here and then I think he had a little TV as soon as you walk in the room to the left. Okay. Is that essentially what Gannon's room looked like when you got back from Oklahoma? I don't remember if I walked down there immediately or not. Um, I, I, don't, I think I did, but I, I don't remember specifically, but that's about what it would have looked like. Okay. That was a common appearance of his room, so. Was his bed always sort of uh, backed up into that corner? Yeah, his bed would have been typically pushed all the way up um, against this wall and this wall, not pulled away for any reason. Does it appear there's a little gap there in the? It's hard, it's hard to tell in this picture because the, the covers are kind of ruffled up, but. Okay. People's Exhibit 23. Do we need to pull it down? Can you just not do it? All right, yeah, be 22 first, but you can just. So People's 22, what is that a picture of? So now we're back in the master on the first floor, on the main floor, and uh, we've walked into the master bathroom. You can see the shower right here with the tile and the glass door and this would have been the defendant's closet uh master closet if you will so the all the clothes in there and whatever other things were in there pretty much belong to the defendant <clears throat> yeah so as i referenced earlier the the coat closet which is normally called as when you walk in that's where i kept my clothes in her because the defendant had a closet full of clothes and there wasn't room for mine so okay and then people's 23 yeah, this would have been just taking another step in where you can see, you know, just her clothes, the defendant's clothes hanging up, shoes on the top rack there. He was 24. Uh, what are we looking at? That looks like uh, that would have been the defendant's closet, I believe, because those were her book bags. <clears throat> and yeah, you can see some of the same clothes we saw in the previous picture hanging up here. So yeah, that's the defendant's closet as well. And her shoes there? Yeah, her shoes. Another rack of shoes. And then people's 25? Uh, that would have been, as soon as you walk in the closet to the right, the uh, same closet. So I want to ask you some questions before we jump on to the next uh, couple of photos. When did you learn um, about Gannon, Gannon, having something happen to him. Uh, you mentioned hearing something from the defendant about the burn downstairs. Was there a point in time when you learned that he was missing? Yes, I was in Oklahoma. We had had our first day of class. Like I said, I was scheduled to be there two weeks. I just got out our first day of class. I went and ran um, a couple miles, whatever it was. And then uh, I was already back in my hotel room uh, preparing for the next day and uh, and whatever. And then we started the conversation back and forth about he's not home yet. We had specific times for them to be home. Um, typically was the street lights. It's something I used to do as a kid. I had to be home by the street lights. So we just implemented that. And he hadn't come home in time. And uh, it was abnormal, but it wasn't worrisome. So um, I don't know how much you want me to go into that. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you some follow-up questions okay. about that. When you say that he hadn't come home yet, did you know that he hadn't come home or is this what the defendant was telling you? Yeah, based on the conversation that me and the defendant were having, of course, I was in Oklahoma, so I had no clue. I'm just relying on trusting her that um, he hadn't come back from his friend's house yet, which is where she said he had been. 
And what day was that that you heard this information? This would have been the Monday, so that I believe it was the 27th. 27th. Yeah. Do you know if he went to school on the 27th? According to her, he did not. Her being? Excuse me, the defendant. According to the defendant, he did not because he was having stomach issues and he was sick, which in my mind at that time is like, why is he going to his friend's house if he's that sick? So it was a little confusing, but. Would it, uh, would it be typical if he was having uh, digestive issues to stay home from school? No, sir. Okay. So that by itself was out of the ordinary. Right. And when did you find out that he was going to stay home from school? I believe uh, without having time stamps, I believe it was that morning. And I think she sent me some photos okay. saying, you know, Gannon's home. Here he is or whatever. Yep. And then... When you found out from the defendant that he had potentially gone to a friend's house and hadn't come home, do you know what time that was? I mean, I don't know specifically without looking when that conversation started, but it was it was, it was already in the evening where I was when, when um, we started that conversation. So you learn in the morning that Gannon doesn't go to school from the defendant mm -hmm. because of stomach issues. And then sometime in the evening, you learn that he had gone to a friend's house and had not come had home. Had not come home. And that all comes from the defendant? Yes, sir. When did you get back to Colorado? I um, I came as soon as I can after the, I decided basically that there was something actually wrong. So the 27th, as soon as I decided he's missing, I got to come home. I had, all, I, not to get ahead, but I know, I think the defendant had called 911. I don't know about the, when the police came to the house, but I know I also called them and said, hey, what's going on? My son's out there somewhere. And at that point, I called our travel people and said, hey, I need an emergency ticket home. And I left. I had a buddy drive me to actually to Oklahoma City, and I left from Oklahoma City Airport early the next morning. So let's unpack that just a little bit. Sure. So <clears throat> to your memory, the defendant tells you that she called 911? She did. Was it that specifically, or was it an accumulation of things that made you worried and decide to that you need to get back home and see what's going on? Yeah, so and like I said, I didn't know how deep you wanted me to go at that point. I, I had also contacted numerous of Gannon's friends' parents in the neighborhood that I knew, um, you know, he would typically frequent their house and, and play with their kids and stuff, and none of them had even seen him. So then it, it started to become an issue. Uh, there was also a, another claim about some new friend on the school bus and, and some other stuff surrounding that. I'm sure we'll get into. Um, do you want me to go into nope, that? Okay. Right All right. Um, there, there was that. And so I asked, started asking the parents about, do you know any, do you know this person's name or do you know anything about another person? And so it became, it started compounding, as you said, to become more worrisome. So basically you're accumulating information and, and growing more worried. Is that what you're describing? Yes, sir. And then when you said you called your travel people, do you mean you called the National Guard folks? Well, we have like a central billing travel type agency that does all of our flights and stuff like that. So I just called them. I think it's called Sato. I don't remember exactly, but I called them um, on my orders. It has the emergency number. So I just called that, say, hey, I got to go home. This is happening. Okay. Um, I also called Landon and some of her family as well to try to notify them, hey, I'm going home. Something's wrong. When did you actually then fly out of, I think you said Oklahoma City? Uh, yeah, so one of my uh, battle buddies or whatever, one of my guys in my class took me up to Oklahoma City because that was the only flight they could find um, or the soonest flight they could find. And um, it, early the next morning, I spent the night sitting in the, at, once again, right across from the ticket counter at Oklahoma City. I don't remember the flight time. So when you say the next morning, is that January 28th? Tuesday, January 28th, yes, sir. Did you get any sleep that night? No, I just sat there and whatever. Did you fly back to DIA or did you fly to Colorado Springs? I think I, I don't remember exactly. I knew I left Oklahoma City, but I'm pretty sure I got back to, well, I know I got back to Colorado Springs, all the, the different legs, I don't remember to okay. be honest, but I know I got, I came into Colorado Springs. So you, do you remember being picked up from Colorado Springs airport? Yes, sir. Who picked you up? The defendant. So let's talk about that just a little bit. <clears throat> she have her own vehicle? At that time? I don't know what she drove to the airport based on my- Listen to the question. Did she have her own vehicle? We went and got a rental. Well, she went upstairs and got a rental car. Did she have her own vehicle that you all owned that she would typically drive? Bad questions on my part. 
Does she have a vehicle that she would typically drive? Oh, does she have one? At that time? Yes, she did. It was a Volkswagen T1. Okay. What color was it? Black. Okay. What did she actually pick you up in at the airport? Uh, like I said already, she, we, she went upstairs. I was down at the luggage carrier. She went upstairs to get a rental vehicle. Okay. Did that seem odd to you? Absolutely. Okay. At some point, uh, were you in contact with Landon uh, with this news of Gannon being missing? Absolutely. And cause once I decided there was an issue and a legitimate issue, uh, I, I think I called her first, can't get a hold of her. And then I started calling her daddy and other family members to try to get a hold of her. But I did talk to her Monday on the 27th that evening while still in uh, um, at Fort Sill. And then I'm sure I don't remember exactly along the way, but she said, I'm, I'll be there. And she started getting her travel arrangements set to get there. So. Did she actually then come out to Colorado? She did. Where did she stay when she came to Colorado? I, initially, I don't remember how many nights. I think she stayed at my house um, for a night or two. I don't remember specifics. Uh, majority of the time, she she got a hotel in town. Um, it wasn't long that we all stayed in the house because we had to leave. So, when when she got to town, and I think you said, did she come straight to your house? I saw her for the first time uh, at the sheriff's office, El Paso County Sheriff's Office downtown. Okay. Well, was she staying somewhere in Colorado? Or did did she to stay? Did she go to your house? After so yeah so she, from my recollection, she landed, came straight to the sheriff's office. I don't know if she did anything in between, but I saw her at the sheriff's office. We left there, I think, in my truck and went home, to to my residence six six two seven. Okay. Drive. Did the fact that. Landon was going to be staying in your house at 6627 caused tension between you and the defendant. Uh, I, I, from her perspective, I can't, well, I can't speak for her perspective. I didn't see their need for tension because there's a little boy missing and we got all, we got to fight together at that point. Okay. So, but was there tension between the two of you over that decision to allow Landon to be at the house? I believe it created some tension in, in, in her mind. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't have that tension. No, sir. I'm just going to speak to right. you. A disagreement though did she get mad at you for allowing landon to be yeah we house? disagreed on that on that note yes okay uh at some point then did that cause the defendant to actually move out of the mandan drive house and i'm not asking you for specific days just a yes or no i believe I, I believe that's what she said caused her the defendant caused that caused her to move out yes i'm going to object at this point it's unclear if he's just speculating as to what was going on in uh, the defendant's mind, or if this was actually verbalized to him. If it was verbalized to him, I think he's going to testify. If he's just speculating as to what she was thinking, I think it's inappropriate. I agree. I don't think that he can testify as to what she was thinking at the time. He can testify as to what she did. He can testify as to what she said. And that's what I'm trying to, to okay. get across here. And I'm actually asking for a physical thing. Did she physically go to the house and take things out of the house and move out? She did. Absolutely. Roughly, when did that occur? Uh, Within the first week. Okay. I, I don't remember the exact dates. I'm sure we'll get to that. Okay. And so if we can put up uh, People's Exhibit 26. Twenty six hasn't been admitted yet. Uh, I move for admission of twenty one through oh, you're right. one. That's right. Yep. I'm sorry. Whoops. Go ahead. All right. What is depicted in people's 26 uh this would have been the defendant's uh closet in the master um master bedroom bathroom area um looks like it's been emptied out okay so did you move anything out of that closet no sir i did not who did uh the defendant there's still some things that were left behind it looks like yes sir it appears so are those some of the defendant's items as well it may be hard to tell. But. It's hard to tell. I mean, I mean that you mean be specific here. I mean, some of that stuff is mine, my items, but so I'm asking more about the things hanging. It looks like there's a belt or something, and then some sort of a jacket, maybe. This belt looks like it would have been mine. Actually, I, I remember it because it had that little crease in it, and I do. I cannot tell what jacket that is to be specific about it. Okay, and then People's Exhibit Twenty Seven. Is this another view of that same closet? Yes. So that would have been my sweater. Uh, I don't know whose sweatshirt that is. Um, and those are linens from our, our bedroom. 
linens from your bedroom? Yeah, up here in the top corner from our bed. Okay. And then, um, so looks like um, you said the defendant came in there and moved all those things out. Yes, sir. Uh, did you, you didn't help her at all? No, sir, there were other people helping her. Okay. And then I want to jump now to People's Exhibit 28. What is this? So this was Harley's room and uh, the door to Harley's room would have been over in this area. And then that's a door into her closet. Okay. And then People's 29. And that's walking into her closet, it looks like. Her being Harley? Harley, yes, I'm sorry. So the uh, clothes and the shoes and whatnot, is that all Harley's? Those are Harley's shoes, yes, sir. Uh, and then when the defendant moved out uh, the week of that 27th, uh, did Harley also move out? Harley did, yes, sir. Let's move on to People's Exhibit 30. Is that Harley's clothes hanging in that closet? Yes, sir. And People's 31. Is that the way the closet looked after Harley and Letitia moved out later the week of the 27th? Yes, sir. You can take that down now, Judge. Thank you. I want to go through and have you describe uh, for us how you all would communicate. Did each person basically in the family, and when I say each person, I mean you, the defendant, Harley, have cell phones? We, all three of us did. Yes, sir. With separate phone numbers? Separate phone numbers, yes, sir. And then was there a, a fourth phone number that was assigned to Gannon and Lena? Yes, sir. It was like the kid's phone. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, what was your phone number back then? My phone number, 843-478-6714. Uh, Who was the provider for that phone number? I was. I'm sorry, the cell phone provider. Oh, AT&T. Okay. And then what about uh, Gannon's or the kid's phone? Uh, 843, I remember it was 6724 because it was just one digit off of my end. I don't remember the middle three. Okay. So 843 area code. Mm -hmm. You have to say yes or no? Yes. Sorry. Okay. And then the last four, 6724. 6724. Okay. Who was the cell phone provider for that phone? AT&T. And then let's talk about Harley. Do you remember her phone number at that time? I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Do you know who the cell phone provider was? It was AT&T. AT&T. Also 843 area code for sure. What is 843 area code? Uh, it's uh, uh, coastal South Carolina at okay. the time. <clears throat> and then um, what about the defendant? Did she also have a cell phone? She did. Who was the cell phone provider for that phone? AT&T. Do you know her phone number? Yeah. Eight four. Yes, sir. 843-655-7460. During the course of the investigation, uh, did law enforcement ask you for access to the phone associated with the kids or Gannon's phone? Yes, sir. We'll come back to that. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about vehicles. Um, what was your vehicle? I had a, I think it's, I believe it was 2016, but Nissan Frontier. It was red, had a six inch lift on it, some big mud tires. Was it a Titan? No, it was a Frontier. Frontier? Nissan okay. Frontier. And you said what year was it? I believe 2016, either 2015 or 2016. Okay. Who typically drove that vehicle? Typically I did. Anybody else drive it? Uh, t uh, the defendant from time to time. Did she like driving it? I. I don't remember ever enjoying driving it. Okay. And then what about Harley? We saw a picture of it, but that was a white VW Jetta, I think you said? Yes, sir. 2018, I believe. And then what about the defendant? She had, uh, I think it was 2019, but a Tiguan, a black Tiguan with black rims and kind of blacked out uh, tent on her windows. Did you all own that vehicle? No, that was a lease. So now I want to jump back to what we were talking about earlier when she picked you up at the airport. Did she give you a reason? Did she say why she wanted to drive a rental vehicle as opposed to a normal vehicle? Yeah, her reasoning was we would be doing a lot of searching and driving around looking for Gannon and be due to her vehicle being a lease, she didn't want to go over the mileage on whatever those requirements or allotments were. What kind of vehicle did she rent? Uh, a little 
little small. I don't remember. I think maybe a Kia. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a small little um, sedan. What color was it? I believe silver. Was it white maybe? Maybe white. You don't have a good memory of that? I don't because we just parked it in the driveway and drove my truck around. So, which made totally no sense. So let's talk about um, that. Did you actually own the pickup at that time? I did. Not a lease issue? No, it was, I was paying the note off, but I mean, I owned it. It was okay. my name. Why was it um, strange to you, the way you said this earlier, that there was a rented vehicle as opposed to her normal Tiguan vehicle that she was picking you up in? Once again, and I, I know I've made the statement already about something else but in in these moments when it's it's an emergency things like miles on your car don't matter it doesn't matter what car we drive if we're going searching um so it just and in the moment i'm just like whatever just do what you want but you know but yeah it didn't make any sense did she tell you where the tiguan was uh she did she said it was um so you know because i asked it brings back remember i asked how did you get to the airport if your car's not here well i parked it at french elementary school which is where she was employed and one of my co-workers brought me or former co whatever it was one of my co-workers brought me to the airport and dropped me off so just so we're clear you asked her about that and she told you that one of her co-workers drove her to the airport and dropped her off absolutely is french elementary school close to the mandan drive address I mean, it's on the south end of town, but I mean, it's it's a couple miles away. Okay. Did you ever drive over to French Elementary School to look for that vehicle? I did. Did you find it there? I did not. Did you find that odd? Absolutely. Let's talk about um, Gannon's relationship with the defendant. How would you describe that relationship? Trusting. Um, I w I, I'm comfortable saying I think he had love in his heart for her. Um, I don't think he was afraid of her or any fear for her. I, I, one of the things about Gannon that is special, and I think it's special about a lot of young boys, he, he absolutely loved his mom. And he had some of that same love for Tisha too. So he was a mama's boy? He was, absolutely. How was, um, I guess, who who would discipline the kids? And when I say the kids, I'm talking about the little ones. So Lena and Gannon. Uh, both of us, both myself and the defendant. I want to get into now your relationship with the defendant. We talked about how you met her. <clears throat> How would you describe the relationship? Was it a loving relationship? Uh, what was it? I, um, at what point? Well, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Uh, I think loving is a good example. It was fun. It was, I, I, as you brought up, I was coming off of a divorce. So, yeah, it was fresh. It was new. Um, I had a good time. You know, I didn't have custody of the kids at that point. So we were a little bit more free and, you know, things we could do. How old were Gannon and Lena when you met the defendant? When I met her? Yep. Um, two and five, I believe. I think that's right. When did you first move in together? I, so my officer school took me through um, August. I had to go to a two week phase in Alabama. We, uh, Landon and I sold the house and it was either, I think I signed the papers and it sold while I was gone, but right in that same time frame, late July, early August, when I got back is when I, I, I might have moved my stuff into where she, we started renting a house, but I moved in late August of something what year? like that, uh, 20, uh, 14. When did you first meet Harley? Uh, earlier in 2014, uh, I maybe March. Uh, I, I remember, well, let me back up. I, I had exposure to her at the softball games and stuff, but I never really, you know, had a conversation with, you know, with her. But uh, when I first met her, 
I actually remember helping her doing her homework the first time I met her. Um, she was doing some vocabulary. I don't know why that stands out, but yeah, I was at Tisha's apartment in uh, spring of 2014. When were you officially commissioned in the National Guard? I uh, took my commission June 9th, 2016. Did you change your uh, duty assignment roughly around that same time? Yeah, I was in National Guards, as you mentioned, is mostly reserved. So before my, I commissioned, I was enlisted, uh, I made it up to some first class E7. And in, in active guard status, I had to resign my full time in order to take my commission. And then I was in the reserve status for about uh, eight months, nine months before I went to Alaska. Okay, so what I'm asking is, um, did you have to change where you were living and where you were assigned with the National Guard after you took your commission? Not immediately. Did you at some point move to Columbia, South Carolina? I didn't move there. I had, when I, uh, as soon as I commissioned, like I said, I, it's kind of hard to explain. National Guard's a little different. I, I resigned my full-time status, but, you can get on temporary orders. And so I was on temporary orders in Columbia for a couple months, um, but I was close enough where I could commute, um, you know, half the time or whatever. Okay. Um, but I just stayed at the armory in Columbia, South Carolina. So that's where, when you say you stayed there, that's where you were working. I worked there and then I, I got a, you know, cot and stayed in an extra room down the hall or whatever it was. And then the house that you mentioned earlier in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, uh, did you and the defendant buy that house? Right around that same time, yes, sir. Do you remember going to Oklahoma roughly around that same time as well? I did. I wasn't slated to go until January. And th this trip to Oklahoma would have been for six months, and this was for my basic officer course, not to be confused with the two weeks in 2020. Right. Um, so I, I went there. I was slated to go in January, but somebody dropped out, so I was able to go, I think, the end of July, and it took me through December. Um, just shy of six months. Did you take um, either Gannon and Elena with you to Oklahoma for the six month period? I did not. At that point, they uh, their mother still had majority custody. So, uh, but they did come and visit. There was a few uh, holidays or whatever. And I came home a couple of times to visit during that, that time period. What about the defendant? Did she ever come to Oklahoma to visit? The defendant did as well as Harley. Did she ever move to Oklahoma during that six month period with you? She never moved. I, I don't remember her staying at maximum a week. I don't even think she stayed that long at any point. Was it that year, 2016, when you learned of the job up in Alaska? I did. While I was in Oklahoma, I learned of that. Was that something that interested you? Absolutely. Did you apply to that position? Absolutely. When you finished that training in, in uh, Oklahoma in 2016, where did you go after finishing that training? I came uh, home. Uh, say home, but came to our the house that the defendant and I owned in Myrtle Beach. Okay. When did you actually get transferred up to Alaska? If you uh, can tell us. Yeah. So I, I mean, I spoke to this earlier. Uh, I came here for schooling. Uh, I got here, I think April 1st did two months here and then I took the trip with the kids up to Alaska. So I think June 9th or something like that, I, I got up there, but I was on orders in the Alaska guard on my way here. Um, and then just did my training. So you said June, what year are we talking about? Uh, 2017 once again. Yeah. What was the, um, I'm a Navy guy, so I don't understand national guard. Okay. Uh, is it, are they bases forts? What are they called? Uh, most of the time, your typical National Guard duty is going to be at an armory, like a local reserve center or something. They're all over Colorado Springs. Uh, this one is a little different because it was an active guard unit, uh, which is kind of rare in the guard. But uh, it was at Fort Greeley, Alaska. I was stationed and lived on base. So how long were you stationed up at Fort Greeley? Uh, just shy of two years. Uh, like, as I mentioned, I got hired on in March, uh, went to my school here, and then I um, that was 2017, and then February 2019, I was transferred here. Was it roughly around that time that you um, actually filed for custody of Gannon and Lena? 
No, that would I, I think I actually filed um, for custody before I left to Alaska. So is that the time period you're talking about? Yeah, so when did you file for custody of Gannon and Lane? So like February or March of 2017, I don't remember specific dates, but it was before I was leaving, yes, sir. Do you remember um, a specific incident occurring prior to you leaving for training where you and the defendant got into an argument? Uh, yes, In sir. 2017? In 20. <laughs> don't remember. Is there more you can give me? Oh, I can't. Specific? I can't ask you leading questions. So okay. I got to ask an open-ended question. Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah, so I, I think we did get into an argument, a verbal argument about me taking the job in Alaska. That was a, 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 so a point of tension for sure. Did she tell you whether she was supportive of you taking that job in Alaska or not? I don't remember specifically if she said supportive, but all indications were no. Uh, was that the? sort of the source of the fight? Uh, I would say yes. That was the source of many verbal ar disagreements and arguments in that time period. Were you all living together at that particular time? Yes, when this, sir. When this fight occurred? Yes, sir, in the house in Myrtle Beach. Okay, did did the defendant take specific action regarding your belongings in the house? Yeah, the day, yes, sir, the day I was supposed to leave um, to come to Colorado for training, uh, which would have been late March, I don't remember the specific date. Yeah, she threw all my stuff in the front yard and whatever just said i'm done with you kind of thing said that so you said she said i'm done with you kind of thing and i'm not quoting directly but it that's the theme of it i'm done you take your stuff and go and whatever did the obviously the relationship didn't end then is that right no i i think it was actually about a week or eight or nine days before we we talked again uh, not a lot of communication in those i did talk to her the whole trip here and then it was a couple of days after i got here i think so yeah it was tough times you mentioned earlier that uh, the defendant actually did come up to Alaska. Yes, sir. When did that occur? Various times. I, I don't know. I don't remember specifically when she first showed up. I would, had already been there for a while, um, but she did come and then stayed for a week or two, two or three weeks here, a month there. I mean, it was she never moved there. I never felt like she moved there, I should say. Well, and I'm probably just asking a bad question, but was there a period of time where it seemed as if uh, there was a move uh, where she actually brought Harley with her to Alaska. Yes, there was a period of time, and this would have been uh, that first summer, because what she told me was that she was looking for a job at the school and that she had enrolled Harley at the school uh, in Delta Junction is the town, but that she was enrolled there. And then, you know, that's where we're at. Delta Junction, Alaska. Yeah, which is where Fort Greeley, the base is located, is Delta okay. Junction. So did her, the defendant and Harley actually come to Alaska during that time frame? They did. So there have been sometime uh, July, June or July. I don't remember how long they stayed, like I said, but. Did, um, did the defendant ever tell you, I'm, I thought, did you say something, Judge? No. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, did the um, defendant ever tell you whether she enjoyed being in Alaska? She actually told me the opposite quite a bit, that she hated it there, that we should give it back to Russia. So Give Alaska back yeah, to Russia? Give, just give it to them because yeah. it's so bad up there. Would the defendant use manipulation on you in your relationship? Absolutely. Objection calls for speculation. You're ruled. Go ahead, you can answer. Absolutely. In this time period that we're talking about where you were in Alaska um, and she's telling you that she hated it, um, did she manipulate that situation to try to get you to leave that uh, duty station? Yes, sir, at the end she did. When you say the end, what do you mean by the end? By the end, that's what, her manipulating a situation is what led me to leave Alaska. When did the manipulation in that regard change or, or cause you to start to leave Alaska? That specific uh, incident or set of incidents would have been in the fall of 2018. What was the what was the nature of that manipulation? Objection 404B. Council approach, please. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to take a break uh, until about uh, 1040. Again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not discuss the case with anyone else. Do not do your own investigation about any aspect of this case. Um, and if we can have everyone back in the uh, jury room ready to go at 1040, we should be able to start on time at that point. All right, for the jury, please. Thank you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. We were having a uh, discussion at the bench uh, regarding uh, the permissible areas to go into. And it seems to me, Mr. Allen, that what you can do is, I think it's probably safer just to use some leading questions, uh, talk with uh, your witness as well. Um, but I do think that he can talk, as I understand it, um, what the evidence is going to be, or um, the offered evidence is going to be, is that Ms. Stauk made a claim regarding uh, sexual harassment That's right. uh, against some other people in his unit uh, that may have made it uncomfortable for uh, Mr. Stout to remain uh, in that unit. And apparently that's why uh, he decided to change duty station. Um, we're not going to get into what the substance of those allegations were. Mr. Stout, you would be prohibited from saying or testifying whether or not you believed those allegations, whether or not you thought she was making them up, those kinds of things. You can say that she made them and you can say that you can testify about uh, how that made you feel and why you wanted to move, but you cannot testify about whether or not you thought they were true unless she told you something different. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, Judge, I think it's, it's um, as I was saying at the bench, it's a form of manipulation to get that to happen. And so I do think it would be proper for him to say whether it was a, an attempt by the defendant to manipulate him being assigned to that duty station. He can leading, go ahead. Leading to him then changing duty stations to Colorado. He can testify that he thought she was manipulating him, um, but he cannot testify that that's what she thought. There you go. Um, because in this case, I do think that there's some issue about. <clears throat> um, whether or not the defendant may have manipulated certain events or whether or not the defendant may have manipulated certain conduct um, at some point in time. And so I do think that that is uh, relevant. I think it's admissible. I think it goes to some of the heart of the issue of the evidence in this case. Um, so I think that he can testify as to whether or not he thought he was being manipulated um, and leave it at that. I don't think he can go any further than that. Mr. Tolini? Yeah, and so I've got a couple different objections. Go ahead. I mean, one, basically what we're talking about, at least it sounds to me, and I'm making the record, that we're talking about propensity evidence. She manipulated him in Alaska, therefore when she was doing this other stuff in, 20, in January of 2020, February of 2020, it must have been manipulation of well, that is propensity. Um, further, there has been no 404B notice um, filed by the district attorney of the prior bad acts. Um, I'm unaware of any case that I've come across that does away with rule 404B just because we raised the issue of not guilty by reason of insanity. Obviously, we have some different experts that are going to come on that have been provided different evidence. Um, some of that may be described as 404B. Um, and so that expert, that influence, that expert's decision, I think it would be relevant and admissible through that expert. I just don't think it's admissible through this, through this witness we have here. Um, because whether or not he felt manipulated or not, has no real bearing on what was going on in 2020, unless we're talking about propensity, or unless we're talking about other motive, other types of stuff that would need to be endorsed under 404B. Mr. Allen. Judge, um, they have put the defendant's mental condition into uh, relevance by claiming in GRI. Um, this witness specifically spent a lot of time with this defendant over many years. And uh, case law is clear that he can comment on whether she was sane or not, and if she was having any mental health issues, which I do intend to get into. Uh, there is evidence, that, as we know from preliminary hearing, that the defendant attempted to manipulate uh, this investigation, and we're going to have evidence from uh, different people on that uh, point as well. And uh, that's sort of the track record of this particular defendant. That's not a bad act. That's uh, mental condition evidence that they have put in play by claiming NGRI. I, I tend to agree with the prosecution here. Um, I've, I've read the, uh, I have read all of the uh, psychological examinations, the competency um, and the sanity examinations. 
Um, I'm also familiar with the facts that are uh, involved in this case. I don't think it's necessarily propensity, but I also think that uh, it would be appropriate uh, to ask uh, any of the experts that are coming um, whether or not um, conduct by the defendant in uh, 20, I think this was 20, fall of 2018, um, would be an example of uh, manipulation by the defendant. And if this testimony is not permitted at this point in time, or this evidence is not admitted at this point in time, there wouldn't be a basis by which to ask the expert that question when they take the stand. Well, then. So I, I, I understand that you disagree, uh, but I think that it's, I do think that's appropriate. I think it is more of intrinsic rather than extrinsic evidence. Um, so I am going to allow it. But again, uh, Mr. Stout will not be permitted to say whether or not uh, he believed that those allegations were false or not. Uh, and uh, he can testify as to how, what happened, how he reacted to it. Um, and we're dealing with a relationship between the people. It, you know, it has a lot to do with uh, his mental state, the, uh, Mr. Stout's mental state at the time that the investigation was going on based on his history with the defendant. It also has something to do with the way that the defendant may have acted uh, at the time all of this happened based on her history with him. So I'm, I'm going to allow it um, and you can do it through leading questions. All right. All right, with that, we will take our break. Uh, and so if Ms. Stout needs a break, uh, we need to do that now. Oh, all right, thank you, Mr. Cook. All right, court will be in recess, thank you. Where's Mr. Allen? Oh, he's in the back. I'll get him. Michael? Do I need to listen? Yes. No, no, oh, not again. Okay. I'll just remind you that you're still under oath. Okay. <laughs> So, are we good to go? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So you've had your time with yes. Mr. Stout. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring the jury in then. You doing okay, oh, Yes. Judge, one thing. Apparently, um, I'm not sure if the mics are actually. Yeah, this is working. I just need to hold it closer. That one is. Yeah. yeah. And is that one turned on also? Yes. Okay. The ones at council table remain off for the reasons that we discussed uh, long ago. Okay. But the lectern is on, uh, witnesses on. Thank you, may all be seated. Court will recall 13 or 20 CR 1358, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. When we took our break, we were in the midst of the examination of Mr. Stout. That's where we will resume. Mr. Stout, I remind you, sir, that you're still under oath. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. So Al, we were um, just getting into um, whether the defendant manipulated uh, your assignment to Alaska. Um, did she, well, let me ask you this. There was a point in time where she raised sexual harassment claims that caused tension for you in your command in Alaska. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, did that involve a Corporal Jenkins and a Lieutenant Colonel Ortega? Uh, Captain. Jenkins and yes, Lieutenant Captain Paul. Jenkins. Yes. Okay. Again, I don't know these National Guard ranks. It's, it's Army. Army. Yeah, okay. Army. Again, I don't know that either. <laughs> um, I had asked you before uh, whether she was happy being assigned, having you all living up in Alaska, and I think you said no. Absolutely not. Yes. Um, did this? claim of sexual harassment, not asking you whether it was true or not, uh, but did that lead to you eventually leaving Alaska and coming to Colorado? Yes, sir, it did. Were there two specific things that um, you witnessed that were sort of at the heart of these sexual harassment claims? Yes, sir. Uh, did one of those involve Captain Jenkins? Yes, sir. Uh, was that a time when you were at some establishment and there was some drinking involved? Uh, yeah, me and Tisha, uh, me and the defendant showed up for dinner and the, the other person was already there and had been drinking. Yes, sir. The other person being Captain, Captain Jenkins. Jenkins. Yes, sir. Was that one of the issues that the defendant raised as the basis for sexual harassment? 
Uh, that that situation, yes, sir, a comment he had made. Okay. And we're not calling Captain Jenkins, so we don't need to get into what he said. Yes, okay. Sir. Uh, and then as it relates to Colonel Ortega, did you witness a specific event that was an interaction between Lieutenant Colonel Ortega and the defendant? Yes, sir. Uh, what was that specific thing? Can we describe the event? Yes, uh, that so you witnessed. I So I was the S1, which is the personnel officer um, for the battalion. Uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Ortega was the battalion commander. Uh, I was still in the office. Um, the defendant was coming to pick me up because we only had one vehicle in Alaska. And uh, she was coming from the house to pick me up. And when I came out of the building, he was leaning over into the truck talking to her. I, I, I don't know what they were talking about or anything. And then as soon as he saw me, he left, uh, didn't stop and, you know, communicate with me, just left and walked away. And that was it. Okay. And so did the defendant specifically use that incident as another part of the allegation of sexual harassment? Yes, sir. Did she file a formal complaint with your command? There was a, I don't know, I don't think it was with the command. I think it went through the state. So okay. Alaska National Guard, I don't, I don't know the specifics of it. The, the, my only involvement was to basically say what I just said. Okay. So what I'm asking you is um, when I say command, again, I'm, I'm okay. not in, that in, informed on National Guard. Did she inform the National Guard of this complaint of yes, sexual sir. harassment? Yes, sir. And you knew that? Yes, sir. Did that cause you issues in your uh, unit? Yes, sir. And did that uh, eventually lead to you transferring from Alaska? Yes, sir. Was there a time when she specifically sent you a text uh, and told you that she was pregnant? Yes. It, and did that text also include a um, ultrasound picture? Yes. Did she tell you that she was actually pregnant with twins? Yes, sir. Was that another form of manipulation? Yes, sir. Sustained. You can ask him how he felt sure. about it. Um, did you, um, did the defendant ever give birth to twins? No, sir. Uh, did it ever turn out that she was pregnant with twins? No, sir. Sustained. Very will disregard that answer. Well, did you ever go to any um, doctor's appointments with the defendant? For that specific instance, no. Okay. Um, do you know whether she went to any doctor's appointments for those, that specific incident? I'm confident that she did it. No, sir. So we talked about uh, the sexual harassment um, claim and that causing tension in your unit and that eventually leading to you transferring from Alaska, right? Yes, sir. Uh, when did that actual transfer occur? Uh, like I said previously, I, I when I say boots on ground, I arrived here February 15th, I believe, 2019. And I think you had previously said that the defendant preceded your move to Colorado. Yes, sir. When did she leave Alaska? So she wasn't in Alaska. Um, she came to Alaska for a couple of weeks or a month, I think in December of, that would have been 2018. Um, the kids, she brought the kids with her, that being Gannon and Elena and Harley as well. And then we stayed there. Actually, we stayed in a house on uh, one of the bases, like a temporary house. And then, like I told you, they came ahead of me about a month and a half or so. Okay. So you're saying that they got to, they being the defendant and the kids. Yeah, all the names I listed, the defendant, Harley, Gannon, and Elena. Would that have been in January of 2019? I believe they came in January because we did Christmas in Alaska. And um, I think you had previously said that they, that the defendant actually found the 6627 Mandan Drive house and that's where you all moved into. Yes, sir. Do you remember um, the defendant filing burglary um, allegations in 2019? Yes, sir. How many different ones did she file? I believe it was two to my recollection.
One of those specific claims was uh, a burglary in the fall of 2019, correct? Yes, sir. And there were some things that um, she pointed to to you to support these that as being a valid burglary claim. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one of which was a hammer hanging from a string in the garage. Yes, sir. Uh, that included uh, potentially somebody had, had maybe got into the attic access in the garage? A squatter is how she referred to it. Was there ever a squatter in your house? No, sir. No one was ever found. Uh, did you have an ammo can in the house? I did. Yes, sir. Uh, was it dumped out on the floor and made to look as if someone had rummaged through it? Objection. Stained, you can ask him wh what he found and what it looked like. Okay. Tell us what you remember about this ammo can. In this specific uh, break-in uh, allegation, the ammo can, I kept it, uh, I think, next to the bed or under the bed or something. <laughs> and it was open and dumped out like somebody had been rummaging through the ammo can. Um, another, the, one of the clothes hampers was dumped out and the bed was kind of pushed, uh, the mattress was pushed off the box spring, just enough to look like somebody had forced their way through that area. Did the defendant tell you that that was another uh, piece of evidence or sign that there had been a burglary in your house? She did. Was there also a gunshot claim? There was. Did this come from the defendant to you? Yes, sir. What did she say about that? It, she claimed that uh, she fired a one of the weapons, I don't remember which one, up the storm well. Um, that's pretty much what the okay. of it. So let's talk a little bit about that. Oh, one of the weapons you said. Uh, did you have firearms in the house? I did, yes, sir. What kind of weapons? Uh, I had a, a nine millimeter, uh, a Smith & Wesson nine millimeter compact. I had a, I don't remember the brand, but it was a black and Tiffany green uh, nine millimeter full size. I also had a uh, AR pistol type um, gun. There was a 20 gauge, uh, Benelli youth shotgun and uh, a 12 gauge, it was all black shotgun, I forget the brand. And then I think there was at least one Smith & Wesson little 380 uh, compact as well. So when, you, when she's telling you that there was a weapon that she fired in the, I think you said the storm well, mm -hmm. is that the window well? Yeah, and, and the specific one was the window well um, next to, if you remember the picture where the computers were, there was a window well right behind those computers. That's the one she said that she fired it out of. Did you ever find a shell casing associated with that gunshot? No, sir. In that particular, those uh, pistols that you're talking about, the Smith & Wesson 9mm, that what sounds like a Tiffany green or blue 9mm in that 380, are those semi-automatic handguns? <clears throat> yes, sir. Are you familiar with some automatic handguns? Sir. Have you fired them? Uh, I, I don't know specifically the 380. So what I'm act asking is generalized. Oh, Have you yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, when you fire those weapons, does the slide um, automatically slide back and eject the shell casing? Ejects it and then loads the next round into the chamber. Did you ever see any evidence uh, that that gun had been fired in that window well in the basement? No, sir. Did the defendant ever admit to you that she made up those burglary claims? Yes, sir. What did she say? Uh, I don't remember specifics, but uh, I don't know how much you want me to elaborate, but I, I had to do some digging and eventually I found out that most of the story she had told was just not accurate and she finally admitted to uh, making up the claims of break-ins. I don't remember if she gave a reason why right either. In your mind, was that another attempt or attempts at manipulating what was happening in your relationship? Absolutely. At some point um, in 2019, did you and the family get into family counseling? Not family counseling. Um, well, counseling. Yeah, Gannon and Elena specifically. Okay. What about the defendant? To my knowledge, I don't think she had counseling. Okay. Did she make specific comments to you about Gannon that led to you wanting to get Gannon into this counseling? Yeah, that was there was two reasons. Um, and do you want me to elaborate on that? 
Yes. Okay. As long as these are things that she told you as to things that led you to want to get Gannon into counseling. Yes, sir. One of the reasons is the, the one. The other reason was, like I said, said before, he was a mama's boy, and he, he, he both the kids had um, struggles with. You know, we had a little bit of back and forth of custody issues, so that was part of the reason. The other reason is she made a, a claim that he was coming after her to some degree. Um, he and and Gannon her. coming after the defendant to some degree, and so. Once again, twofold mission with the counseling, one to make sure he's dealing with his, you know, the situation with his mom and being apart from her. And then also the counseling should uncover anything else that's going on or any disdain he had for the defendant. Who was the defendant closer to as far as the two little kids? So Gannon and Lena? Lena, undoubtedly. Did you say undoubtedly? Absolutely, she was. Whose idea was it to move Gannon to the basement? It was mine. Okay. Did you ever witness um, Gannon displaying any behavior uh, that would support the claim that Gannon had it out for the defendant? Absolutely not towards no one. I, I absolutely never witnessed that period. Did you ever take uh, family trips together? With the defendant and the three children? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, specifically, was there a trip in early January? January. Of 2020? That would have been just myself and the defendant. Okay. What was that trip? Uh, it was to celebrate our anniversary and we went on a cruise out of Southern Florida. Did you need a passport for that cruise? Mm, I don't believe so. No, sir. Did you ever take any trips with the defendant that required a passport? Um, I don't remember specifically. We we had one when we went through Canada just to get it stamped, just for you know remembrance. I don't remember specifically. Well, we did. We went to Mexico. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I forgot about that. That's okay. So the that leads to this question: Did you have a passport? I did. Yes. Sir. Uh, when you would you said you went to Canada mm -hmm. to get it stamped? Mm -hmm. Yes. Say yes or no. Yes, sir. Uh, when you went to Mexico, did you get your passport stamped? Yes, sir. Did the defendant, did you see her with a passport? Uh, in, in, with, in Mexico, yes. Uh, did, did she get that passport stamped in Mexico? I, I don't remember. I, w I would assume it would have had to been because um, okay. we went to a resort in Mexico. So, But you know for a fact that she did have a passport? She did, absolutely. <laughs> in this... And, and I'm going to ask you to give me a more specific timeline, but in late 2019, early 2020, where was the defendant working at that time? Early 2020, I don't know, but late in 2019, she was employed, uh, I believe it's Whitefield School District 3 in French Elementary School, as I referenced earlier. Um, she was attempting, is what she- Well, let me, let me get to that. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, so she was working in late 2019 at Whitefield School District. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Um, and again, that's for our court reporter. Absolutely. She'll get mad at me in a minute if I, if we keep doing that. Um, was she enjoying her work there? She was not. Did she tell you that? Absolutely. What did she tell you? She had uh, a conflict um, based on her educational status. She had a conflict with a principal where she thought she was more educated and should have more of a leadership role um and, and and then just other stuff surrounding that i don't remember specifics but so let's unpack that a little bit uh when you said that she had a conflict um uh, because she felt like she was more educated you mean the defendant felt like she was more educated than the principal yes the defendant yes sir Did you ever go to French elementary school? I did, yes, sir. How many times did you go visit her there? I don't remember exactly, but I would cook lunch and take her lunch for her and her coworkers. And um, you can elaborate on that a little bit. So just, you would go there and take lunch? Yeah, with her and sit and eat sometimes with her. Sometimes I would drop it off. Yes, did sir. you see her interactions with people at the school? Yes, sir. Did you see any um, problems with anybody at the school? Not with her, the team that she was always with. That um, conflict that you described with her and the principal, um, did that 
lead to her uh, manipulating, in your mind, getting out of that particular school? Allow it, overruled. In my mind, it did in, in accompanying with uh, an injury claim she had as well. Did she, t okay, so let's ask, well, I'm gonna ask you about that. Okay. Did she specifically tell you about um, uh, some allegations she made about being injured at the school? Yes, sir. What did she tell you? That she was standing on a bench or standing on the bookshelf or something, but she fell and a bookshelf fell and hit her in the head and she had a, a head injury from that. Did you ever see any signs um, on the defendant of being injured um, from either falling or having a bookshelf fall on her head? No, sir. Did that lead you to believe that this was another manipulation by the defendant? Yes, sir. Did she tell you um, what kind of work she was hoping to get into? Yes, sir. What was that? Uh, she always had talked about wanting to be a airline flight attendant. And so I think from what I understand, she started pursuing that uh, late 2019 uh, through the Christmas holiday and into early 2020. Who was she pursuing employment with? Spirit Airlines. Where's Spirit Airlines out of, to your knowledge? I, I have no clue. I know she went to Orlando, Florida for Spirit Airlines training is what she told me. When did that happen? Uh, January, uh, no, uh, I think shortly after Christmas, within a day or two after Christmas 2019. Um, and it was a short trip. <laughs> you mentioned earlier uh, when we were first talking about um, the weekend of January 25th, Saturday, Sunday, January 26th, um, your mom being in town. Yes, sir. Uh, when did your mom get into ha into town here in Colorado Springs? She was here for about a week, if I remember correctly. I don't remember a specific date, but she was there, I think, that whole week. Did she stay in a hotel or at the house? At the house. Where did she sleep? Oh, I don't remember that specific time where she slept. Okay. Um, you mentioned that there was Gannon's bed in his bedroom. Mm -hmm. Let's say yes or no. Yes. Sorry. And then there was a second bed in Gannon's bedroom? Yes. And then there was a bedroom bed in Harley's bedroom? Yes. There was the master bedroom. Yes. And then you had couches both downstairs and upstairs. Do you remember uh, with that in mind where your mother slept when she visited you in? in... I, I still don't, not that okay. specific visit. Okay. How were you and the defendant getting along during this period of time when your mom was visiting? Not well. How was the defendant uh, interacting with your mom? I think it was fine and peaceful. I don't, I don't remember it being there any negativity. Was there anything out of the ordinary? I don't, I don't remember. Okay. You mentioned um, going up to DIA on January 25th after having dinner and all that sort of stuff. Is that the last time you saw Gannon alive? Yes, sir. Did you say anything to him? Yeah, he was, um, we were at the top of the stairs and uh, I was getting ready to leave with mom and uh, me and Gannon were at the top of the stairs and I just gave him a hug and I always used to rub my fingers through his hair and uh, just told him I love you and uh, something I would always tell the kids when I had to leave or when they would go back to their mom's house was like, you know, you're always, You're always going to be in my heart and I'm always going to be in your heart. And I'll see you when I get back. And he's like, okay, daddy, love you. And I'm going to finish watching Pokemon. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yep. We got into this a little bit earlier about the phones, and I asked you specifically about the phone that was assigned to Gannon and Lena, uh, and whether law enforcement asked you for access to that phone. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Aaron, may I approach? You may. 
bringing people to twenty eight. Yeah, I remember. Oh, so recognize this? Absolutely, that's their phone. What is this? That's scanning Elena's phone from that time period. Um, does it appear to be changed at all? It does not. Okay. Now I move for admission of People's 228. No objection. Exhibit 228 will be admitted. I asked you earlier about um, when you would take trips together. Uh, do you remember taking a uh, trip to Hawaii? Yes, sir. When did that occur? Um, you okay? Yes. Is there a Kleenex up there? Yeah, I got some. Okay. Um, I think 2018 spring, it was right before that volcano erupted. So I think it was spring of 2018. Who went on that trip? Uh, the defendant, myself, uh, all three children, Harley, Gannon, and Elena. Do you remember um, a, taking a video of Gannon in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, we took multiple pictures and videos, yes, sir. May I approach? You may. People's exhibit number 15, if you need to take it out of the sleeve, you can do that. Excuse me. I recognize it. I recognize my initials right there. What is people's exhibit 50? Uh, now I also see the date of when I initialed it. It says Facebook video of Gannon Stalk. Is this a video of, of Gannon in Hawaii? I believe so, yes, sir. And you saw the content? I did, this? yes, sir. Is it a fair and accurate uh, copy of that recording from Gannon and Hawaii? Yes, sir. All right, move for admission of People's 50. What do you mean? approach. Is there an objection? Yes, sir, it's relevant. Alan? Do you want to say it from here? Uh, he has to. Yep. Yeah. All right. Mr. Allen? Yep, so we'll come back to that in, in a moment, Al. Mr. Allen, you need to refer to the witness by Mr. Stout. Okay. I want to go back to what we were asking or what I was asking you about earlier about um, the defendant telling you that Gannon had it out for her. Uh, did she make a specific comment to you about Gannon in a knife? Yes, sir. To you? Yes, sir. What was that comment? Uh, something about he had threatened her with a knife or came at her with a knife. Did you ever see Gannon threaten anybody with a knife? No threats ever out of Gannon. Knife or no knife. And was that right before um, you got Gannon into counseling in 2019? Yes, sir. I want to ask you about 
<clears throat> specifically, I asked you earlier about trips that you would take together. Mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned um, that the defendant was trying to get a job with Spirit Airlines. Yes, sir. Uh, did she like to travel? She loved to travel, yes, sir. Uh, did she like to travel to Disney? Yes, sir. Did you ever go with her to Disney? Uh, yes, sir, in various configurations of family, I should say. Did she ever take any other trips that you were aware of, either with you or without you? Yes, sir. Uh, did um, did you take cruises with her to the Caribbean? Yes, sir. Did she ever take any cruises to the Caribbean by herself that you knew about? I don't know about by herself. I know with just Harley, I know she took a few. Okay. What about to Australia? Never heard of a trip to Australia. No, sir. What about a trip to Bogota, Colombia? Never heard of a trip to Bogota, Colombia either, sir. What about Jamaica? Don't know about Jamaica. Uh, like I said, she went on trips to the Caribbean, so I can't can't attest to that. Okay. Um, you mentioned that cruise in Florida in, um, I think you said in January 2020 to celebrate your um, anniversary. Yes, sir. That was just you and the defendant? Yes, sir. Um, did you take other cruises together? Uh, yes, sir. Did you take a cruise in Southern California? Uh, we, yeah, we left out of Southern California, went to um, Ensenada. When was that roughly? Let's go. While I was in Alaska, I don't remember exactly. So between 2017 and 2018, somewhere. Did you take another um, cruise with the defendant in uh, the summer of 2019? We did, yes, sir. Who was on that trip? Uh, myself, the defendant, Harley and Gannon. And I think one of Harley's friends as well. You mentioned taking a trip to Mexico. When was that? That was, that would have been right before I went to Oklahoma for six months. So 2016. Where in Mexico did you go? Cancun. Was the defendant with you? Yes. Was she with you the, I mean, besides going to the bathroom or shopping or something like that was she basically with you the whole time during that trip yeah there was one time i i was sleeping and she said she went out and got dinner other than that i think we were together 90 percent of the, i mean a majority of the trip did she ever tell you about waking up in a tent with cartel members never heard that story from her mouth sir no did you ever have um stressors in your relationship between you and the defendant as it relates to finances? Yes, sir. What kind of lifestyle did the defendant want to live while you were with her? Based on things that either she told you or that you saw? Uh, I mean, a classic example is she always compared herself and wanted to be like Kim Kardashian. That was kind of her main thing that she uh, looked towards. Uh, I, I think a best way to sum it up is always wanted to live above our means. To live above your means? Yes, sir. That's a good way to sum it up. Did you uh, agree to being uh, living above your means? There was, there was examples where I gave and there was examples where I didn't. But was that ultimately a source of tension between you and the defendant? Yes, sir. Did she ever accuse you of um, infidelity or cheating? Yes, sir. I wanna ask you about uh, that storage room. Uh, was it typical that you would keep um, luggage in that storage room? Yes, sir. Do you remember any specific suitcases that were kept in there? Yeah, there was like a reddish orange one. They had some flowery, I don't know how to explain it, but some some patterns on it. Um, there was a large green one. I'd say extra large green one, actually. Um, there was a few smaller, like carry-on size black um, suitcases. So we, we had quite a few. Where did the large green one come from? Uh, I believe that, well, I know for a fact it came from uh, Landon, which is Gannon's mother, her aunt Veronica. Uh, Landon took a trip there at some point in mine and Landon's relationship, and she came back with that suitcase full of clothes. And I, I just kept it after me and Landon split up. Where, and was that also stored in that storage room? It was. <laughs> Did you ever use that large green suitcase on trips? 
I used it more so when, when I moved or PCS. I don't remember using it on a trip or vacation because um, it was just too big. Do you remember being shown a picture of a suitcase under a bridge in Florida? Yes, sir. Did you recognize that suitcase? Yes, sir. What did you recognize it as? That same uh, extra large green suitcase from my house. Want to have you flip to People's Exhibit number 48 in that uh, notebook? Yes, sir. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. What is that a picture of? That's a picture of that uh, extra large green suitcase we've been discussing. Um, under a bridge? Uh, I can see the, the footings of the bridge. I can't really see the over the bridge structure itself, but. Does that appear to be the same suitcase that we've been talking about that uh, Landon's Aunt Veronica gave uh, to Landon when you and Landon were married? Yes, sir. That was stored in the storage room? Yes, sir. All right, move for admission of People's Exhibit 48. No objection. Exhibit 48 will be admitted. Go ahead. And may we publish? Oh, there we go. <laughs> What do you remember um, about that suitcase other than it being large? Um, there was a few things that were broken on it. Um, I don't know if I, I remember, I don't know if the wheel was, but I think the handle on the other side was broken. There's a few things that had just worn down over time on it. Um, but the size is, is the big thing. I remember how, uh, how large the suitcase was. So. Okay. All right. Um, I may approach. You may. What's been marked as People's Exhibit Number Thirty Three? Obviously, a disc. Do you recognize this disc? I do. How do you recognize it? Uh, because I initialed and dated it thirty-one March. Did you watch the contents of this? I did. Is it a fair and accurate representation of a video um, that you have seen? Yes. Okay. I move for admission of People's Exhibit 33. Defense. Objection. Exhibit 33 will be admitted. Go ahead. In permission of publisher. You may. Uh, it, it's, we need the screen, Judge. It's not, you're not feeding yet. I have a pre-screen up here so that I can see. Okay. I just don't know what to do. Well, devastating. Initially, Scott, I can't lie when the TMZ information. Cannon, I promise this is the last time I'm going to ask you. I'm just freaked out, okay? Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? I did Okay, you promise. You promise. Pinky comments. Okay. All right. So listen, listen. We're, all right. Um, we're going to have to sell stuff to fix it. Okay. So we figure out what we got to sell. We can sell the sofa. We can sell whatever because we got to get it fixed. So, lady, don't be mad at us and kick us out of the house. Okay. You got it? You got it? I'm just worried about my. Heart. Okay. Shh. Listen, 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 listen. So tomorrow. Tell us a couple of. Council approach for a moment, please. It's okay. Two, I just don't know what to do. Something that you can see in. 
Was that? Was yes. that Lena, absolutely. And then the female voice that you hear on that recording, who is that? Tisha, oh, excuse me, the defendant. And then the um, other voice that you hear towards the end, uh, whose voice is that? Those are the last words I ever heard Gannon speak. I want to have you jump back into that binder, Mr. Stouck, and look at people's exhibits 19 and 20. The ones I mistakenly tried to admit without any foundation earlier. Okay. You recognize those? 19 and 20, yes, sir. Are those, um, well, what are they? Those are two different angles, of pictures of Gannon in his bed. How, uh, have you seen those pictures before? I have, yes, sir. When did you see them? Uh, I, I don't want to mix it up. I know I've seen them in um, through various things, but uh, one of these specifically or at least one, if not both, the defendant sent to me that morning, which would have been uh, Monday the 27th. Okay, so we're talking about January 27th of 2020? Yes, sir. Um, and then you received those specifically from the defendant? Yes, sir. How? What What method did you receive them from? Text message. Text message. Are they fair and accurate uh, copies of the, the photos that you received on January 27, 2020? Yes, sir. You're going to move for admission and permission to publish 19 and 20. Mr. Fellini? Exhibits 19 and 20 will be admitted. So I think we have uh, people's exhibit 19 up on the screen now. Uh, tell the jury what we're looking at in people's 19. So once again, that's uh, Gannon in his bed. Um, I, I referenced the TV off to the left. You can see it here, a TV and a, a, his dresser. The table we discussed earlier, and then uh, once again, there's Gannon in his bed. Is that typically um, the way Gannon would sleep in his bed with the blankets uh, just piled on top like that? Uh, no, sir. There was a couple things I noticed that were different. There seems to be a big, I don't know, pillow or bulge or something down here. I don't remember this red and green blanket actually being on his bed. We've discussed that. I, I don't remember that. Okay. I can't say 100% that it, it wasn't ever, but... Um, and then um, people's 20. This is basically just another depiction of that same scene. Yeah, it, it appears to be. Um, I mean, I think it's different, though, because if is it OK if I show? Well, what, or? let me ask you this. Um, what is there a difference between the two photos based on your observation? Yeah, absolutely. The, what are those differences? If you, if you look at his where his hand is here. And if you look, if we can go back to the other one, his hands are in a totally different place, position. See how his hands are crossed right here. The blanket's kind of pulled back a little bit. Um, and then a, a huge, huge thing to me was his bed was almost never pulled away from the wall like this. And we discussed that in a previous photo, um, that his bed was almost always pushed up against the wall. Um, and then that, um, the bulge that you referenced in the other photo, in people's 19. Same as right here. Yeah, right there. And then 20. Right here. And notice that difference as well. And um, do you even recognize that particular blanket or was you recognize it, but you don't think it was typically on Gannon's bed? Yeah, that blanket is one that was in our house somewhere. I just don't think it was a typical blanket. It wasn't his. It was not his. It was not his blanket and it was not typically on his bed. Okay. You can take that down for now. I want to jump back, Mr. Stout, to when we were talking about your trip to Hawaii in 2018. <laughs> and I previously showed you People's Exhibit number 50, which was that disc. I think I might have left it up here. Let me check, actually. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you want to, this time I move for admission of people's request permission to publish. 
Mr. Tolini. Subject to prior objection. Uh, objections. That was me. I hit the mic. Okay. All right. The objections overruled. Exhibit 50 is admitted. And permission to publish, Your Honor. You may. So before we start playing um, People's Exhibit 50, um, who's who is who do we see on screen there? That's Gannon. Go ahead and play it. Where are you at? In Hawaii, go. When you got back from Oklahoma, Mr. Stout, did you participate in searches for Gannon? Yes, sir. Tell the jury about what you did to, to look for Gannon. Um, the first day, which would have been Tuesday, 28th, uh, left the airport and then came home and just got somewhat organized. And then there was a story about Gannon running away or walking away and there was somebody said they might have seen him at a gas station in fountain and so so let me ask you um specifically um you don't know whether that was a true statement or not correct in the moment i didn't um no okay but did that cause you to go do things to see if that was in fact a legitimate sighting of gaming yes sir what did you do I, myself and the defendant in my truck, my red Nissan truck, uh, drove to that gas station. I went in, well, I think I met the officer there, uh, if I remember correctly, and uh, went in and watched whatever the, he allowed me to watch the footage of uh, what boy that had, was alleged to be Gannon coming in and out of the store and so I could confirm if it was him or not. Was it Gannon? It was not, it was another boy with his father that or, or whatever, another boy with an older man. It just wasn't Gannon? It just was not Gannon, no, sir. What else did you specifically do um, to look for Gannon? Uh, there was times when I, after the day was over, I'd drive around at night just seeing if I could spot him. Uh, that specific, uh, I believe it was Tuesday as well, I um, had been downtown to the sheriff's office giving an interview and then came back home and uh, checked on the girls, being Harley and Lena, and then uh, told them I was going out searching again and uh, went went to uh, the Walmart and Fountain. I was heading to the Walmart and Fountain, um, just maybe he's in the video game section or, or GameStop or something, um, just thinking of places he would be. And uh, then it uh, occurred to me, or I remembered that the defendant had said her car was at uh, French Elementary School. And so I, I never actually went to Walmart. I went directly to French Elementary School to look for her vehicle. And you previously told us that you didn't see her vehicle there. Absolutely not. I drove around the school three times just to make sure I wasn't missing it. Did she ever tell you where her car actually was? Never did. That was the only thing she ever told me was that I left it at French Elementary School. Um, <clears throat> at some point, did, based on things that you're learning, did it, did you, in your mind, did it change from Gannon didn't come home from a friend's house to something different? That was really the key moment. There, there was a lot of things we've discussed, a num new number of them, some discrepancies in the pictures, um, the, uh, the, the, the rent a car situation. Um, I think I had already known at that point that um, I had talked to my neighbors in surveillance from their house, he had never walked in here saying sustained. Well, I think he, what he's describing, Judge, is what he saw on surveillance. You can't, you, you can't talk about what your neighbor said to you, but you can describe what you saw on the surveillance tape. Okay. So two different circumstances. This is not the surveillance tape of the truck. This is. Let me ask a question. Yeah, thank you. Um, did you have an occasion to see surveillance video from neighbors in your neighborhood 
Did you? Yes. Okay. Um, did you see um, Gannon ever walking away on that videos, on those videos from your house and never returning? I did not, no, sir. Okay. So back to- So, well, I have okay. to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> um, so you were earlier describing an accumulation of things that led you to change your opinion or your mind as to what actually happened with Gannon. Yes, sir. Uh, and you said, I think the one of the big things was the defendant telling you that her car was at French, you go to French and it's not there. Yes, sir. Is that accurate? Yeah, that was the key moment when I switched from, she knows more than she's telling me she knows. Did you also participate in um, interviews at the sheriff's office as it relates to the investigation into Gannon's disappearance? I did, yes, sir. How many times did you go to the sheriff's office? Twice on that day, once before the uh, driving to French, and then immediately following that, I called them and said something's wrong, and I went immediately back to the sheriff's office after that. In that same time frame, um, did the defendant add any additional information that she told to you uh, as it relates to Gannon's missing? I don't believe so. I don't think so. Well, did she at some point tell you that she was raped? That was the next morning. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, what did she say about being raped? I'm not sure the date. <laughs> sure, I'll clarify. Yeah. Um, we were talking about uh, January 28th. Yes, sir. Just Tuesday. now about yeah. you doing interviews at the sheriff's office. You said the next morning, so that would be January 29th. Is that accurate? Wednesday, January 29th. Yes, sir. <laughs> what did the defendant tell you on January 29th as it relates to being raped? So she, I, I slept on the couch. She called me into the room, and then she proceeded to tell me a story about how... Um, a man got in the house somehow. I don't remember that specific version, but he got in the house, raped her, abused her, beat her, and then beat Gannon up and took Gannon. Um, and you want me to keep going on that specific? I want you to tell what she said in that particular story. Right, and then so and then he. She also said um, he had got burned, um, and in that, and then she said that. Uh, well, I said, well, where's everything at? Like all the mess, you know, the blood and everything. She said, well, I cleaned it up, I got scared. And so, okay, well, where's the the, uh, the the bloody mess, the clothes, the the, the rags, whatever? Uh, well, I disposed of it. Well, where's where did you dispose of it? Um, it wasn't in the trash can at the house, it was somewhere else. And it was just this long string of stuff. Um, okay, so let me, let me break in there. Sure. <clears throat> It sounds like the way you're describing that, that's a discussion that you had specifically with her where you're asking her questions and she's responding to your questions. Well, there was two parts and that's why I asked you about elaborating. The first one was just her talking. Okay. And so, but the, the last part that you just described, it sounded like you were describing an interaction where you're asking questions and she's answering questions. Yes. And at this point, Landon was also sitting in there talking with us as well, just okay. to clarify. Um, when you had the opportunity to view uh, neighbors, uh, I guess, ring doorbells or surveillance videos, uh, did you see any strange men on those videos going to your house? So to clarify, I did, and, and I was, it was stopped because it was hearsay, but I, did never, I never saw surveillance of him leaving or not leaving on foot. The, and I'm sure we'll get to the other surveillance later, but I never saw that. That was just what the neighbors told me. So what I, what I'm asking you right now, Al, or Mr. Stalk, I apologize, is did you see on any of the neighborhood um, video any strange men going into or out of your house? Yes, when I think he just said he never watched any videos. So this was just what the neighbors had told him. That's not what no. he said. No, he's he overruled. <laughs> I re asked the question. Yep. Just so the record is very clear, okay. did you watch surveillance video um, from neighbors in your neighborhood to see anything as it relates to Gannon's disappearance? Uh, no, sir. You didn't watch well, any videos? Well, I did watch the one video with the truck, but we I, I don't think we've gotten there yet or we're there. I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't know where I'm at, okay. Mr. Allen. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're fine. What I'm asking is very specifically, did you watch some neighborhood video from neighborhood surveillance video about the time that Gannon went missing. I watched one and that was him leaving the truck and coming back home. That's okay. the only one I watched. Okay, so you didn't watch any other videos to see, um, to either confirm or uh, not confirm that a strange man had come into the... I, I've seen nothing Okay, else. all right, thank you for clarifying that. Um, at some point, 
Did you uh, become involved in the investigation? Yes, sir. Tell the jury about that. Uh, at some point, and I, I don't know the reasons why, but I was directed to go to the FBI's office and uh, start, um, you know, being, I, I call it being questioned, but just kind of given a background history of, of, you know, our relation, mine and the defendant's relationship and, you know, kind of what we've been doing so far this morning. And from that, uh, it turned into um, pretext phone calls. Okay. What do you mean by pretext phone calls? Uh, phone calls where uh, I would um, get on the phone with the defendant while I was at the FBI office and uh, be giving direction. And, and they also gave me the flexibility to talk with her normally, but be giving direction on things to say and things to ask and, and whatnot. Who was involved <clears throat> with that process? Obviously you were, but who else from the investigation side was involved in that process. So, of course, yeah, I was there. The defendant was on the phone and then there was Mark Riley was present. Um, so I'm going to break in every time you say a name. Who is Mark Riley? Mark Riley, um, I think a detective at the sheriff's office or investigator. Okay. I, I'm not sure his role at the time. Uh, Bethel, Jess Bethel, a similar role to Mr. Riley, from what I understand. Um, FBI agent, uh, Mr. Hughes. Um, I, I don't know his title. A specific title um amber cronin uh who was amber cronin with uh, uh, fbi as well um john i, I always say his name around grusling or grusling grusling uh, with the fbi um i i saw in passing other agents but those were the ones that i remember being specifically in there I, there may have been others i don't remember specifically do you remember um maybe like this agent back here andrew uh, cohen I remember him walking around a lot. I don't remember him being specifically on any with me on any of the phone calls. Um, I may be wrong about that, but would these phone calls originate um, sometimes by you calling the defendant, mm -hmm. and other times where the defendant would call you? Yes, sir. Um, how do you know that it was the defendant on the other end of that phone? I recognize her voice, and and we would always talk about something relevant that would you know I would know it was her, whether it was Gannon or something about our relationship or or our life in general. Would you also, in those conversations, talk about um, specifics to the investigation? Yes, sir. Uh, would the FBI agents or the sheriff's office agents, um, detectives, pass information to you to specifically ask the defendant? Yes, sir. On some of those recorded phone calls, can you actually hear people whispering to you? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And Judge, uh, what I intend to get into next is uh, admitting uh, discs and then playing those discs and some of these phone calls are pretty long. I don't know if you want to go through the admission now and then we can do that other process when we get back or. So I, are any of them less than say 15 minutes? I, because of contextual issues, I think it makes sense to play them in order as opposed to breaking them up. Uh, the very first one is an hour and 57 minutes. All right. So let's do the, uh, do the foundational um, elements necessary for admission. Okay. Um, and then we can. Uh, play them after lunch. And probably just admit all of them at the same time yep. and then go from there. And so for the record, Judge, uh, what I'll be showing him for admission is People's Exhibits 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59. Okay. May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may go ahead. Can I just stay up here with this? Yeah, that's fine. 
uh, People's Exhibit 35. Obviously, a disc again. Do you recognize it? To the front of it. Yep. Yes, my initials and the date. Uh, have you had a chance to listen to this recording that's on this disc? Yes. Is it a fair and accurate representation of that phone call? Yes, sir. People's Exhibit 36, do you have your initials and date on that one as well? Yes, sir. Did you listen to this recording? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate representation of that recording? Yes, sir. People's 37, are your initials and date on this? Yes, sir. Have you had a chance to listen to this item? Yes. Is it a fair and accurate representation of that recording? Yes. People's 38, do you have your initials and date? Yes, sir. Uh, have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it a fair and accurate representation? Yes, sir. 39, do you have your initials and date? Yes. Uh, have you had a chance to listen to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. <coughs> 40, are you going to the date on this? Yes. Have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 51, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Uh, have you listened to the contents? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 52, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Have you listened to the contents? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. 53, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes, sir. Have you listened to the contents? Yes, sir. Fair and accurate? Yes. 54, uh, date and initials on this disc? Uh, yes. Uh, have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 55, are your initials on this disc? Yes. Have you listened to the contents? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. 56, are your initials on this disc? Yes. You listen to the contents? Mm -hmm. Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes, sir. 57, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Did you listen to the contents? Yes, sir. Fair and accurate? Yes, sir. Tedious, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Uh, You see your initials and date on this disc? Yes, sir. Have you listened to the contents? Yes. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. You didn't identify that one. Oh, I'm sorry, 58. Thank you. Go ahead. And then 59, initials and date? Yes, sir. Have you listened to the contents? Yes. And is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. Uh, just thought I'd move for admission of those exhibit numbers, and I can reread them, or if you have them. I, I have them. Mr. Tolini? No. All right, exhibits 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59 will be admitted. Um, Council approach, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think you know where this is going and what my conversation was about. Um, we are going to take our lunch break a little bit early. Uh, we'll have you come back a little bit early, too. And when we come back, uh, we will be playing, it sounds like, uh, the uh, telephone calls uh, one after the other. Um, so if I can have everyone back in the jury rooms uh, at about 1.15 so that we can start at, uh, say, 1.20, um, again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not do any research about any aspect of this case. Do not discuss the case with anyone else either. Um, Mr. Combs had uh, relayed to me a question uh, by a juror as to whether or not you can receive a transcript at the end of the trial. The answer to that is no. The transcript is for other purposes. Um, uh, no jury is ever provided with a transcript of the court proceedings as they are occurring. So you'll have to rely on your individual and collective memory as well as uh, any notes that you take, but you will not receive a uh, transcript. Um, so with that, uh, I think it's still a nice day. We're not to tomorrow yet when it's not supposed to be. So if you wanna take a walk around the courthouse, something like that, uh, that would be a good thing to do. Again, you already know where all of the um, uh, eating joints are uh, here in Colorado Springs. And we'll see you back at uh, about 1.15. All rise for the jury, please. <laughs>